You need an iconic ship in a sci-fi game. Whether it is the Millennium Falcon, the Enterprise, the Normandy, or the Serenity, these ships have as much personality as the characters themselves, and in Starfield, the creative options when it comes to building your ships are immense. Welcome back to Fudge Muppet, my name is Scott, and today I'm presenting you a sensational creation of mine. This is the Stronghold, the perfect pirate ship for my pirate character. In fact, this ship was specifically designed to accompany the pirate character build, which will be out tomorrow. So there has been a lot of thought and consideration put into the design in order to thematically capture the feel of what it is to be a pirate in Starfield. But right now, in this video, I want to take you through my inspirations and explain conceptually what I was trying to do with the ship as we take an exterior tour of this menace and then we will take a full tour of the ship's interior and then to cap it off I will show you how to build the ship going over every single part where to get them some parts can only be found at specific places and how to put it all together in the most visually understandable way possible do be sure to subscribe to the channel we already did one of these shipbuild videos showcasing the ship that featured in our shipbuilding guide an interceptor catamaran type design and with every role-playing build going forward we are planning to design a ship to match it in a video like this so we can truly capture the feel that we want but let's jump into it this is Stronghold, the ship of my pirate character, the Scourge of the Starry Seas. Conceptually, for this Corsair of the Void, I really wanted to try and emulate similar features to classic sailing ships in the Golden Age of Piracy. However, I wanted to have them adapted for Starfield so that it still looks believable and feels as if it belongs in the universe. I did initially try to make a skinny mast with broad sails, but what I managed at the time was just not aesthetically pleasing, it kind of felt more like a satellite than a ship, so it didn't really feel functional in the way I wanted it to be. And so I went with a ship structure that emulated the feel rather than copied it one to one. Perhaps I will revisit this sometime though. So you may notice that at the front, there are several weapon mounts to emulate the bow of a classical sailing ship, along with the docking port residing here. Treasure Planet is also one of my favorite childhood movies, and the concept of a solar sail is just so cool. And so I found all these Nova radiator pieces to simulate a similar feel, placing them throughout the ship to add structure that feels like they could be solar sails. Plus it gives, I think, a feeling of rigging and sails existing throughout the silhouette of the ship, similar to an actual pirate ship. Also, with the red colour scheme, the gold pops really well and also they match the Crimson Fleet armour sets, making for a perfect look. The cockpit of the ship is placed in the centre, high in the middle, to simulate the placement of a mast, and while I'm aware a captain of a ship didn't sit in the mast, when adapted for a spaceship, it makes sense for the bridge of the ship to be able to see everything below. The structure of the ship is quite intricate, while remaining a simple and mostly symmetrical interior in the layout. This was afforded by the use of multiple smaller habs, such as storerooms, alongside the Hope Tech cross braces, which, like you will see, I think add a good interior variety to the aesthetic. But especially on the outside, they provide some variability in the core ship structures, so that I could again emulate the feel of an old ship constructed with various mast sails and rigging. But of course, it's a spaceship, so we don't need a mast at the fore and the rear, rather they are either side of the ship, mainly so I could create a more efficient interior and provide more structure for me to place these golden radiators around. Like I said, I still wanted to make this ship feel as if it belonged in Starfield, and beyond that I specifically wanted a heavier, more intimidating ship, hence the more menacing moving stronghold feel to it. This wasn't designed as a nifty pirate sloop, but rather a cannon stacked galleon. But perhaps, if the demand is there, I could try my hand at a slighter, quicker version with the same conceptual style. But I think now you would understand the vibe I was going for and have seen plenty of the exterior, let's take a walk inside the ship and investigate each of the decks. The majority of this ship has used Hope Tech parts, and this also goes for the hangar bay. Plus, the heavy red lighting here and the netting feels really cool for a pirate vibe. The hangar bay entrance leads into a Hope Tech 2x2 cargo hall, and also the extender 4 docker leads into this room as well. So no matter where you are coming from, the hangar bay or 
or from a docked ship, you will be entering into the cargo hall. The logic here is that my character is a pirate, a raider who would weather on a civilian outpost raid or boarding an enemy ship, you or the crew would be hauling their plunder straight into the cargo bay for a quick exit. And so I thought it made the most sense to me that it was at the entrance. And it acts as the main hub to which all the other rooms are connected. It's a place where the crew can gather and divvy up the plunder. A big reason I chose to use exclusively Hope Tech Habs is for its more industrial, rougher feel. It's a darker color scheme, and also with the layout I have going on, it can feel quite claustrophobic, like the ships of yore. But as we travel throughout the ship, I find it also gives a kind of comfy, cozy feel in a strange way. At the hangar bay entrance, just to the right, is access to the docker, made longer with Hope Tech spine parts. As we turn left and look towards the rear of the ship, you will notice we have a few options. We can head into a small storeroom with a ladder down, or head to the right and go up a ladder, or we could go left and head through a cross brace hallway. But let's first tackle the lower and main floors before heading up. So heading straight ahead and into the storeroom, there is a ladder that leads down into the computer core. I love all the screens in here and the very stacked, sectioned off appearance with lots of rigidity and the foil-like thermal protection wrapped around the pipes on the roof. It's just such a neat, tucked away basement type computer room, conveniently close to the cargo hall. You can imagine the pirates tracking stock on the computers, divvying up each of the crew cut, making communications with Shinya in the key, database tracking on targets, all that kind of stuff. But let's head back up to the cargo bay and head right. We enter one of the Hope Tech cross braces, which takes us straight to the engineering bay. It makes sense to me to have this close to the grav drive and reactor, and closer to the center mass of the ship. Towards the fore, there is all manner of machinery, monitors, and fuel tanks and such, which again adds to the more so industrial vibe. And at the rear end of this engineering bay, there is a storeroom with a control station underneath, featuring a whole bunch of monitors and desks, and its close proximity to the bulk of the machinery in the ship makes sense to me. I know it doesn't matter from a gameplay perspective, but from a cool ship role-playing perspective, it adds. Functionally, the control station expands our crew capacity dramatically, doubles it actually. So if you happen to be a character that has all ranks of the ship command skill and want to have a full crew, then this can be done. But now let's head back up to the engineering bay and continue to the starboard side of the ship where the armory resides. This is where you can store and display some of your weapons. And there is also a cell in here if you can imagine that if you ever took hostages and needed somewhere to lock them in, you could put them in there. Also, fittingly, I thought the armory here works, close by to the cargo hall so everyone can get prepped, and then enter and meet in the main hub before they charge out to board or raid. Just above here is my captain's quarters, and this Hope Tech Hab is quite comfy looking actually. Very snug still, and it has a porthole window for viewing of the ship. And we will get there, but the crew's quarters is on the other side of the ship in the same positioning, both of which are connected to the top of the ship. I thought having where the crew slept equally close to the bridge and the main hub of the ship was a good call. But let's head up to the mast, so to say. This is a storeroom, one of three connected along the width of the ship via two Hope Tech cross braces. But in the center hab, there is a ladder up to the bridge, which sits atop the entirety of the ship so that it views everything beneath. And like I mentioned earlier, it feels as if I'm sitting atop a mast of a classic sailing ship, peering out at the stars and keeping my eyes peeled for enemy ships. This bridge is really cool. It has a nice view, but it also remains more snug than some of the others. It has the tighter feel, a for the more cloistered vibe I wanted. It also looks really cool in the dark, with the red lights popping, fitting the vibe of the pirate perfectly. If we head back down from the bridge, we can head over to the storeroom on the port side with a ladder in the center leading down to the two by one all-in-one berth. It has all the bunk beds and living amenities stacked closely. This is my crew's quarters, and I love how the Hope Tech bunks look, and how this chair looks, and they're all tightly stacked around the ladder. Then there's this little kitchen section, and then a living space with another ladder down down, and a porthole window that can view the front of the ship. I actually intentionally wanted multiple ladders in here to make it feel snug, and it can give that feeling of having to navigate a ship's rigging. Then, if we pop down the ladder, we find ourselves dropped into the cargo hall once more, and so that is the interior.
exterior tour finished. The layout is essentially a big loop with the exception of the computer core and control station underneath to the rear. But overall, I feel this exact layout with lots of ladders increases the snug close quarters feel that I wanted for this pirate ship. And with the cargo hall so central and the strapped look that is found throughout the Hope Tech Habs, I feel as if it has captured a space pirate feel. But with the tour done, let's show you how to make the thing. I found the easiest way to show you how to build the ship is by splitting it into layers. And so I have entered the shipbuilder here and cut the four stories and separated them. Plus I have parted what I call the machinery core of the ship. I will go over each of the individual parts for each layer and the core. And then in the end, I'll snap it all together so you can then reference to see how this is all built. But let's now begin going over the base, starting from the rear at the starboard side of the Main level, we have two of the Hope 55 landing gear, which can be purchased in Hope Town on Polvo in the Valo system. And snug between them is a Titan 450 helium tank. Moving across the ship again, starting from the rear, we have one of the four Supernova 2000 engines placed directly to the back of the Hope Tech armory. And at the front is a Nova Bracer attached to a Nova weapon mount, which has an MKE 9 Gorse gun and two PB 300 Alpha beams mounted. All the Nova pieces can can be found at New Homestead's ship technician, but you can find them around at several places as well as they aren't the rare Nova parts. We have the second of the engines mounted on a Nova Bracer, which itself is attached to a storeroom and it attached to the engineering bay capped off by a Hope Tech thruster. In the center, we have a Nova radiator between the Nova braces at the back, a Hope Tech cross brace hab connecting the rear of the engineering bay to the cargo hall and another radiator connecting the front of the engineering bay to the spine hab on the other side. As for the port side, much of it mirrors the starboard, including the storeroom, Nova bracer with an engine, landing gear, fuel tank, weapons and mount. But the main difference is that the main hab is a 2x2 Hope Tech cargo hall instead of the extended engineering bay and a thruster. This side has two Hope Tech hab spines also found in Hope Town that connect to the four docker. I'd honestly recommend using Hope Town to build most of this ship and then just add in the Nova extras by going to New Homestead. So that is the base structure of the ship. The main level, its engines, its landing gear. Let's go over the lower level. The starboard hab is the 2x1 control station and the port side hab is the computer core. These two hubs both connect to the storerooms above. Between them is a set of Hope 5 landing gear and either side of that there are two hauler shielded cargo holds important so we can smuggle contraband. In front of those we have four Nova radiators for aesthetic flair and a Hope 4 landing bay situated in front of the computer room and cargo. That is the main level and under level sorted. Let's build up the rest of the ship with the next level being the inhabited level. This one should be really simple as each side is mirrored almost exactly with the exception of the different hab types. On the outer edges we have another Titan 450 fuel tank attached to the hab atop which is a Nova radiator, the top version. At the front of each hab is a porthole window and on the inner sides there are two Nova radiators from the front separated by two De Gamma shielded cargo holds squished together and to the rear of that is another Nova radiator but with the smaller version which is attached to the outer side. They are smaller starboard or port versions, which give more of an intricate winged appearance. The HABs themselves are the captain's quarters on the starboard side and the all-in-one berth on the port side. But to make this ship work, we're going to need the core machinery, which slots in the middle. From the rear coming forward, we have a 700 ton helium tank, followed by the SF-30 sheared flow reactor, followed by the J-52 gamma grav drive, which itself is attached to a Nova Bracer with an Odin 3040C shield generator which can be found in Deimos Star Yard, but also some other places, I think. And at the front, there is a Nova Weapon Bracer. And unlike the other two, this has some of the unique pieces of equipment. We have a Scan Jammer multi-frequency, which can be acquired at the Key or the Red Mile. And this is so we can pass scans when entering cities with contraband. We also have the Conduction Grid and the Com Spike, which you will acquire in the course of the Crimson Fleet storyline. Both come with very useful stats. And also there is a third of the Gorse Guns mounted in here. Also, so before I forget, attached to the reactor are two Nova radiators, one port, one starboard. As for the top level, it is very easy to understand and completely symmetrical. It is three storeroom one by one habs 
connected by two cross braces. Each outer side has a Horizon weapon mount with two Fulminator 8000 suppressors. These are EM weapons that are very useful for disabling enemy engines so that we can board their ships. And also with our elite weaponry and the pirate build skills to back it, I find that our main weapons just shred enemy ships to smithereens. So I think it is important to have an EM weapon option when you do want to board in order to avoid accidental ship destruction. Both the rear and front of the outer habs have a Hope Tech nose B to cap them off and round out the look, and atop these two habs are Nova radiators to add more detailing. The center storeroom has a nose cap B at the front, and atop it is the Overseer 400 bridge, again found at Hope Town. That is all the individual parts covered, now we can stack each one of these on top of one another, starting with the base atop the lower level, and then the mid level, slot in the core, and cap it off with the bridge and its rigging, all done, now you've built yourself the Stronghold, a menacing pirate ship ready to blast away your enemies and plunder their cargo. It can still reach quite a speed despite its mass and despite its lowered mobility, the use of thrusters and the powerful weaponry backed by the skills to match makes this a terrifying opponent in space. I've scanned over every piece in this ship so you can always refer back to this section as you build up this Class C beast of a rig. Like I mentioned earlier, this ship was designed with the captain in mind, that being the pirate build which will be out tomorrow. So be sure to be around when that drops and do subscribe to the channel if you haven't and click the notification bell. We are committed here at Fudge Mop to help give you the best experience with Starfield. Like the video if you enjoyed the ship, feel free to drop suggestions or requests in the comments below. My name is Scott and I'll be back to nerd out with you again next time.